Hello there. My name is Dr. Anton Jessup, curator of monster studies here at the university. As I've already related to investigators, one is never alone here in the university basement, for we house a number of curious and unnatural species, such as this creature right here. See, I've kept a pet mogwai since I was a boy. With a strict regimen of care, they are far from an impossible pet. And with the right understanding of natural biology, the life cycle of the mogwai and the gremlin is far from unrealistic. If you were like most children, which is to say irresponsible and easily distracted, then your mogwai experience probably ended horribly. First came the rapid asexual reproduction, followed by grotesque metamorphosis from larval mogwai into adult gremlin. Before you knew what was happening, mommy was crying, and every appliance in the kitchen had a dead gremlin in it. Such are the lessons of childhood, right? All pets come with rules, and these were rather simple. Number one, keep your mogwai away from bright lights, especially sunlight. Number two, never allow your mogwai to get wet. And number three, never feed your mogwai after midnight. I theorized that mogwai and gremlins were once capable of sexual reproduction, but have long since come to depend exclusively on asexual budding. Various flatworms, sponges, and corals also reproduce this way, but perhaps the best multicellular comparison is the freshwater hydra. They produce sexually, but also boast a unique form of asexual reproduction. If food and water are plentiful, these tiny tentacle creatures grow a series of small bumps or buds on their bodies. These bumps develop into miniature hydras that eventually pinch off from the parent organism to fend for themselves. A healthy hydra may produce new offspring every three to four days. With mogwai, the budding process is even more rapid. A well-nourished mogwai skin comes into contact with even a small amount of liquid water, and several furry balls bud from the creature's back and pinch free from the parent mogwai as independent organisms, all in less than a minute. Again, the mogwai is the larval form of the adult gremlin. What possible business does it have reproducing? Well, in the natural world, we call this pedogenesis, in which larvae breed before advancing into full-fledged adults. The budding process is extremely unpleasant for the parent mogwai, sapping it of vital energy and body mass. Fortunately, in most cases, the creature's ravenous hunger and high metabolism makes for a rather speedy recovery. Now, this budding cycle can certainly continue in a closed circle, but another important biological event plays an important role in the biology of the mogwai. Metamorphosis. While other vertebrates, such as amphibians, regularly undergo metamorphic changes, the mogwai gremlin's transformation differs dramatically from that of a tadpole or frog. When a mogwai gorges after midnight, it cocoons itself inside a chrysalis formed from secreted bile and its own hair. Within this leathery shell, the creature essentially melts. As with the caterpillar, enzymes break down most of the mogwai's body into a rich bath of imaginal cells. Like stem cells, imaginals can differentiate into other cell types and serve as the building blocks of the organism's new body. The mogwai gremlin body also produces this enzyme when exposed to direct sunlight, essentially causing the body to digest itself, only outside the safety of the chrysalis. Needless to say, it's quite an excruciating death, especially since the creature remains conscious even after the process reduces it to a pile of slime, bones, and brain. Scientists are still unclear why this disgusting physical reaction takes place, but most signs point to it being a congenital mutation common to all mogwai and gremlins. 
Other aspects of the creature's life cycle are dependent on solar activity, which brings us back to rule number one, never feed your mogwai after midnight. Ingestion of food only triggers gremlin metamorphosis in the hours immediately following solar midnight, the opposite of solar noon. So in other words, regardless of what the clock says, it all comes down to the position of the sun in relation to the mogwai's location. Oh, it's nothing magical. Brazilian big-eyed bats and urban hedgehogs both engage in post-midnight feeding activity, all thanks to the programming of their circadian rhythms. It's the same with mogwai. Their circadian rhythm triggers the hormonal functions responsible for full metamorphosis. During this state, they're essentially primed for transformation. All they need is a huge meal to trigger the change and provide the necessary energy. Now, obviously, some questions remain. Is this an invasive species better suited for an arid environment? Or is it perhaps a weapons race intended to cripple a world and bring about a green goo apocalypse? <laughs> Share your thoughts. I would love to hear from you in transmission. <laughs>